All right, so this is just a quick little lesson. Um, soloing ideas, right? When you think about a C major scale, cool, here's some notes I could solo with, right? But when you hear the cats who do really cool things, you'll notice that sometimes they're not playing one note at a time, they're playing two notes at a time, right? And there's sort of a magic in that. How do you think in two notes at a time while soloing? Well, you're not really thinking in two notes at a time. What you're doing first is just like you memorize your C major scale, you memorize a harmonized version of that scale. Now, it's really nice when you play it on the G, or sorry, the D and the B strings, because your shapes are either offset, by which I mean there's a note on one fret and there's a note on a different numbered fret, or they're parallel, by which I mean both your notes are on the same frets, right? So the C major scale, if you're playing it in, um, in this particular interval, which we'll think of as a sixth, which means that this note and this note are six away, sixth away, well, I guess technically, well, okay, we won't get too complicated. Anyways, when you're playing like that, um, you're going to go offset, parallel, parallel, offset, offset, parallel, parallel, offset. Now, really quick, that's, and we're talking about the D string and the B string. That's 2, 1, 3, 3, 5, 5, 7, 6, 9, 8. 10, 10, 12, 12, and 14, 13, right? So the first order of business is to memorize that forward and backwards. If you've watched any of my other lessons, you also know that you could go two up, one down. Up. take my own advice, I need to practice this one, apparently. Right? Um, you could you could skip ahead and then go back one. Right? But the main, the main focus that you want here is just to memorize that harmonized scale. Now, once you've got it memorized and it feels normal and good to do it in um, order, Oh, one more thing I should mention. Uh, this is a tip just to have maximum expressibility, and I would call it essential. Play any of the offset notes with your first finger on the B string and your second finger on the D string. And play any of the um, parallel notes with your two middle fingers. That's um, your ring finger on the B string and your middle finger on the D string. The reason for this, one, is just... It's the quickest way that you can switch between two intervals. And two, it gives you room for when you want to get more complicated. It gives you room for constellation notes, right? Notes that are... Notes that are next to the shapes. Right? And it's nice to have those fingers. What's nice about the parallel one is you got... You got a finger for um, notes that are ahead of your shape and a finger for notes that are behind your shape, right? Now with this one, you only have fingers for notes that are, for the most part, ahead of your shape. But, you know, there's freedom and limitation. So, what we're going to talk about now is how do we start applying ourselves, um, how do we start applying this to soloing for ourselves, right? Um, now the first thing you want to do is you want to write a chord progression. I recommend using C, F, and G, because they're familiar chords, your brain knows what they sound like. The first thing you do is you just match the intervals with the chord shapes that you're playing, right? So if I got a, um, if I got a chord progression in my looper like that goes C, and then F, and then G, and then back to C, that's all you're doing at first, because what you want to do is you want to train yourself to think about these shapes, not as fret numbers, and not even necessarily as notes, 
um, you want to train yourself to think about them as corresponding to certain chords, right? Um, so that when you see someone do this, or if someone says play CFG, you can do that so quickly because you're used to using them a lot, right? So you're trying to train your, your brain, train your brain, train your brain to think about these shapes the same way, right? Now, the question might arise, well, how do I know which shape is which chord? Well, think about this. If you've got a C major scale and it goes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. These are following that scale. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Right? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So the only missing gap you need to fill in is knowing whether it's a major or a minor, or in the case of the seventh, a diminished. Right? Now, I've done other lessons on that, but just shorthand here, your one, your four, and your five, i.e. the first note and the chord built off of it, the fourth note, the chord built off of it, the fifth note slash the chord built off of it are major. So C is major, F is major, G is major, right? And everything else corresponds to a minor chord. So this one, you know, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished. The seventh one is diminished. That's the only exception. One, four, five is major. Everything else is minor except the seventh. And then you're back with your major, right? So like I said, first train your brain, know how to go in between these notes. And the next thing that you're gonna do is now that you've set what we call target notes, you're gonna improvise in the spaces in between. Now what makes a solo sound good is sort of the intention behind it. And, and by that, I mean, there's something about really good improvised guitar solos that almost feel composed and things that feel composed feel like there's intention behind it, right? It's like you could choose any note out there and your job is to pick the best one to follow what you just did. So that's why, you know, um, something like, uh, like, let me just, play over the loop. That's why playing something simple like that has more of an effect than something like, let's say this. Of course, I'm kind of trying to make that solo sound a little worse. But, um, you know, that's technically more, that's using more of my technicality, right? I'm playing shapes all over the guitar. But it just, there's not any intention behind that, right? It's just sort of hopping from one position to another, too scared to ever commit to an idea. So what I want you to think about is the fact that these intentional sounding solos are often not making huge jumps. They're not, they're, there's not like these crazy... Um, and of course, there's reasons and places to break this rule. But in general, if you're hitting one note, the note that follows it is not going to be that far from what you hit. So we're going to apply that idea to this um, scale. If your first target note is a C, and you know that on a, in a couple of bars, your next target note is an F, right? You're only going to worry about all the notes in between one target note and the other target note. Right? Start simple. Start nice. Um, now that's great because that means you only really have two shapes that you haven't hit yet, right? Because one's going to be your first starting note and the other's going to be your target note. Um, so this is nice. It sets up a limitation and it also begs the question, well, how many intros or how many licks can I write using just these four shapes? And the answer is you'll never run out if you're really, truly looking um, to be creative with it, right? So um, let me make a shorter loop. Like, I'll just go from C to F here. Or maybe you'll 
go. Right? Or maybe you'll go. Or. how all those great riffs that get written in the studios or or in the improvised solos this is sort of a peek under the curtain as to how that kind of stuff happens um and it it's it's you can start simple and you can get pretty instantaneous results if you just spend an afternoon doing this and it's great because it doesn't feel like work right once you've once you've put in a little bit of work that it takes to move between these shapes and get them memorized the fun part is writing your own chord progression, keeping it simple for now, just a one, four, five, just C, F, and G. Then you, you learn the target notes, and then once you've got those, you try to come up with melodies using only the notes that are really close to them. And of course you can expand that, um, expand that concept out from there, right? But I just think that this is a really great starting point. It was the subject of a lesson I was just giving um, to one of my friends. Um, and uh, the results I've seen are amazing i mean he's he's creating and he's fluent um so i just wanted to share that and put that up on here because i think uh i'm hoping it's a really concise way of explaining the concept um and uh yeah you know let me know if you got any questions um any ideas about it um i hope this helps peace